Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today we're going to be talking about all things vignette in Lightroom. That's how to add them, how to get rid of them and how to get creative with them. Here comes the theme tune. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah. <laughs> I even did a spin today. So what is a vignette? Well, essentially it's when the outside of an image gets either lighter or darker towards the corners and then to the edges. It comes from when you photograph using a lens, you get more light in the center than you do on the outside. But you can also use it creatively and Lightroom gives you loads of tools to make this happen. So let's jump straight in and let's figure out how to do this. So today we're going to be using this image over here. It's pretty simple of a cornfield. It's not the most amazing photograph, but it does demonstrate what we need to know. So essentially, you can actually see the vignetting up here where it's slightly darker and I know that it was taken by 85 mil lens and I know that this has vignetting on it. So what we can actually do is we can do a few different things with vignettes and it's important to understand the difference. The first one is under lens corrections. Now, what this does is if I was to hit enable profile corrections, it knows that it's 85 mil and it actually lightens the image at the corners so that you can actually see that it all looks normal now. Now, under profile here, you can see it's the Nikon. It already knows what lens it was taken on and it's added that profile. Great. And then what you can come over to manual and you can actually edit things here, okay? So you can edit the vignette within that section there or you can do it under the profile here where you can change the vignetting, making it lighter or making it darker, adding more or less vignette. Now, importantly, what this does is it does the image that was taken, okay? So it doesn't matter what I do in terms of cropping it, it will always only affect these areas. Now, to get creative, we come down to this section below called effects. Now, this is post-crop vignetting. So this above, the corrections, essentially gets the image exactly how you want it, flat and simple. But if you want to add an effect, you use post-crop. So let's jump into this. Essentially, the amount you slide is going to make it darker on the edges, and the opposite is going to make it lighter on the edges. Really simple. So darker will usually bring in focus. The lighter kind of is some old 1930s look that you would often see on things. Now, <coughs> excuse me, the other one over here is you have midpoint. So let's put it all the way over here so we can see what we're working with. The midpoint, that affects where it starts from, okay? If you want the, you can see it fades, if you want the fade to start here or if you want the fade to start here. So if I was to move the midpoint to the left, it's going to bring it into the center. And if I move it the other way, it's going to take it out to the outside so it's only affecting those corners. Okay, now then, the next thing is roundness. So you can see here that it's actually an oval because I'm using a landscape image. But if you had a square image, then you might want to actually change that and you'd make it go like this. So let's bring in that midpoint. So you can see now the shape of this is actually changing. You, you can actually see what is happening there. And then the final one is feather, okay? Move it to the left and you're really going to get a hard line and then you're going to move it to the right and then it's going to get really smooth. It's just going to completely fade and you can't see what it's doing. The final slider on here is your highlights. And that's basically talking about how much is going to protect the highlights. So if you move it all the way down here, it's going to affect the highlights and take them all the way to black, all the way to this amount level. But if I move it the other way, it's going to actually protect the highlights and it's only going to affect the shadows. Okay, so let's talk about one other element here and that's this top section here, which is the style. So you've got three different settings here. Highlight priority, what that does, it does a little bit what this highlight is doing here. It protects your highlights, which is great when you've got skies involved. Now you also have color priority, and that essentially is going to look at the saturation of the colors, and it's going to make sure that they're averaged and looking nicely. The final one is paint overlay, which essentially just does everything exactly the same. It doesn't do any analysis of the image at all. It basically just puts on a black, order 
or a white border and that's it. So you can choose how you want. I actually do like the paint overlay sometimes because it does give a real old world effect. But most of the time you're gonna to wanna to use highlight priority. So that's essentially vignetting. However, a few other things to know here is this. This is post crop vignetting. So let's come in here and see what happens once we start cropping things. So let's use this and let's crop this down uh, and let's just use this section in the middle here, okay, over to the side. Now, using this section here, if we were to turn this one off and then look at, at your lens corrections. Now, if we were to go, let's just turn off the auto and let's just go into manual mode. Let's take the vignette and let's make it really dark. Now, what you can see, it's only going to affect the edge of the image, okay? And let's move this to make it more extreme. It's only going to affect what we see right over here at the edge. That's because this vignette is affecting the entire image. So this is where the vignette is starting. But let's bring this in. Let's look at the same section where it's only affecting this. We'll now turn this one off and let's do the same thing down here with the post crop. Let's make that really dark. Now what you can see here, it's very clever, is it's now affecting this as the crop area. So it's actually an effect. This one is correcting something that, that is a, essentially something wrong with a lens, or not wrong, but it's something that a lens does. This one down here is something that you're getting creative and you want to add these effects. Okay, so now you can start adding different effects to things. The final thing that I wanna talk about, which is really important, is a third way of doing this, and that is using the radial filter. Now, why would you want to use the radial filter? Well, it's actually because it's very powerful. So essentially, if we were just to reset the whole thing and let's add something into the middle, we can actually create the vignette that we just did using the vignette sliders. This takes a little longer, but it's more powerful. So for example, you don't want to have your mask inverted, but now watch, we have the same settings. We can change, basically this is the main slider on the other one, dark to light. You can also change the feather, which is at the bottom here, making a solid line or making it nice and feathered and smooth. Great, but now what you can also do is what they were doing with the other sliders is you can have a highlight priority. So now you can only affect the shadows. And so if we were to reset the exposure on this, like so, and we were to just bring in the shadows, and if you watch here, it's not affecting my sky, it's only doing the dark areas in the shadows. But I could also just do the highlights, which would be up here in the corners, and watch what happens. So now it's just affecting that area up here. And again, looking down here, I can look at the whites, okay? And I can do the blacks, and I can do all of these things individually. Now this also has one other advantage. If I wanted to say, reduce my blacks and make them darker, and the same with my shadows, but make my highlights lighter, okay, so this is an effect, a vignette effect. But what I can also do is I might want the outside to become blurry. Now to do that, all I've done is I've reduced the sharpness and the clarity down. And that has effect, if I press O on my keyboard, I can see the area that it's affected. And I've created something really quite dramatic as a vignette, but using this radial tool. So you can see three different ways of doing it. Now, now we know exactly what it does. Let's look at one final example so that we can see the difference here. So we look here and we add, we're gonna use this here, which is a radial filter, and we're gonna use this to look at what the different elements do. So for example, the exposure is gonna affect absolutely everything. But if I was to just affect the whites, it's only going to affect this side here. So watch this, only creating a vignette in the highlights. Whereas if I was to do just the blacks, it's going to do all of this side here. So you can see that by using the radial filter, you can really manipulate an image. So that's the vignetting, but how do we actually use it and when would it look good? I'm gonna show you this image just here. This is an image that I actually edited some time ago on another tutorial. So I'm gonna show how you can use a vignette on this by using the effects tool. And I'm gonna make a vignette to bring in some focus. I'm gonna change the midpoint. And I'm gonna 
add the feather to that. So now you can see, essentially, it looks fantastic. Oh, so that's, that's just by using the vignettes. Let's have a look at before and the after. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the radial filter. So watch this. This is where it gets really powerful. Okay, I'm going to use this here. And what I want to do is I want to bring down the shadows. Okay, so it's only, oh, let's make sure we're not inverted. Only darkening the shadows, but at the same time, the highlights, I actually want to boost in those areas because I don't want to reduce the contrast of it. Well, essentially, I'm boosting the contrast. So let's move that contrast slider. Let's move the contrast up. And I think that's looking great, but I'm also going to knock the clarity and the sharpness down. And now, so we can see we've just affected this area. But the other advantage of doing this, are you ready? Is I can say, now move this onto my focal point. It's no longer just looking at the middle of the image because my subject is off to the side. So I can now focus on my subject here. I'm going to just move that out a little bit. And let's make it a little bit more extreme so that you can see oh, exactly what I'm talking about here. Let's make this go, uh, let's bring the exposure down even more. Okay, and I do want to bring my blacks. Nope, I don't, my shadows up a little, there you go. So I've made it pretty extreme now, but now by coming out of this, you can see that all of the focus is right here by using the radial filter to create this kind of a vignette. Okay, so that's vignettes explained in Lightroom. Now, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe because I've got loads more tutorials coming. Also, leave a comment down here if you like what I'm doing. Maybe you've got some questions or even an idea for a tutorial. I'm going to start doing ideas of other people so that I can help you actually learn how to use Lightroom and Photoshop and photography as a whole. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com.